This is a short video I've put together to show how you can test the uh, influence of a probe on a circuit. So for example in this uh, video I'll show how to measure the influence of a scope probe on a circuit. So what I've got here is a simple uh, test jig. It's got a SMA connector here, SMA connector here, and there's a trace connecting both SMA connectors with a jumper in between and these are just two zero ohm resistors and so the idea is you would connect your signal generator to one side connect your spectrum analyzer to the other side they're both 50 ohms so you should see whatever the signal generator is putting out you should see that on the uh, spectrum analyzer and uh, then we're going to change frequencies and see what the impact is on changing frequency here. Then, uh, after that, we'll connect the scope probe to this, to the actual trace here that's carrying the RF signal. We'll co connect the scope probe and change the frequencies again. And we'll see the impact of um, that uh, scope probe on the signal that's going across that trace. And uh, we will see that there's a small decrease uh, in the signal. The scope probe uh, attenuates some of the signal. So I've got the signal generator connected on this side uh, to this uh, SMA connector. The spectrum analyzer connected to this SMA connector. And right now I just have the ground lead of the scope probe connected to the ground plane uh, here. Uh, the scope probe is disconnected and again it, these are just zero ohm resistors here and we're just going to sweep the frequencies uh, from 1 to say 40 megahertz and we're just going to see what uh, uh, the spectrum analyzer is reading. So here's the configuration of my signal generator. Uh, right now I've got it set to 1 megahertz. It's set to minus 20 dBm with a 50 ohm uh, output and uh, the output here is disabled but uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be changing this frequency keeping the amplitude the same and just changing the frequency and see what the uh, spectrum analyzer uh, indicates. So here's the configuration of the spectrum analyzer. I have got a, a 20 dB external attenuator connected to the spectrum analyzer. I've got my reference offset set to 20 dBm to compensate for that external 20 dBm uh, attenuator and I've got 10 dB of internal uh, attenuation and I'm going from 500 kilohertz all the way to 50 megahertz and uh, the resolution is uh, uh, 30 kilohertz. So I've just turned on the signal generator and you see that it's seeing a peak here at 1 megahertz. That's what the frequency was set at. And it's seeing minus 19.9 uh, dBm as a signal coming in, which is pretty darn close to minus 20 uh, dBm. So it looks as if there's not much um, attenuation uh, in the jig I built there. So now I'm just going to change the frequency. So let's go up to 7 megahertz. So I just... Uh, went up to 7 megahertz and you see it's 20.1 again it's, it's very close to 20 dBm so not uh, no substantial change there in the uh, attenuation of the signal let's go to say 14 megahertz so I've just gone to 14 megahertz and it's still about 20.1 uh, 20.2 20 uh, dBm so let's go to 30 megahertz. So there we are at 30 megahertz and it's 20.2, uh, 20.3 20 dBm. So a small change, very, very small change. And uh, let's try it at, my, at, uh, at uh, 40 megahertz. So there we are at 40 megahertz and uh, it's at 20.6. So, you know, it's dropped about a, like a half a dB, uh, 1 dB across the, uh, the spectrum there, but uh, nothing substantial. Uh, I'm not seeing a, a huge change there. So let's go ahead now and let's connect the scope probe and let's see 
uh, what the scope probe does to these numbers. The scope probe is now connected uh, to the actual trace that's carrying the RF between the SMA connectors and uh, let's see what that's doing now on the SA. So here's the SA exact same configuration as before and I'm going to turn on 1 megahertz. There's a 1 megahertz signal again at 19.9 there's so there's no impact it's about the same. Let's go to 7 megahertz. Uh, 20.5 so it's 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 about the same it's maybe a little bit lower but nothing substantial so let's go to 14 megahertz oh, this, uh, now it's down it's down at least uh, say one and uh, 1.2 or so uh, uh, dBm so it's you could see it's actually dropping so it's 17 at uh, 14 megahertz the scope probe is uh, making a small impact on the signal. Let's go to say 30 megahertz. So there we are 30 megahertz. Ah, we're down uh, over 2 dB. So the scope probe is now attenuating about 2 dB of the uh, signal on that jig at uh, 30 megahertz. Let's try 40 megahertz. See what the impact is. So at 40 megahertz, we're uh, 22.7, almost uh, 23, which is about uh, close to 3 dB down uh, from what the uh, signal generator is putting out. So you can see as you go up higher in frequency, the scope probe is having a bigger impact on um, the uh, circuit. Let's try, uh, that's at 40, let's try 45 megahertz. So there we're at 45, it's uh, 22 point, about the same, 22.8. Uh, let's try, let's try uh, 50, let's try 60 megahertz. And let me open up the frequency span here to go to say uh, 70 megahertz. So there's my peak there. At 60 megahertz and it's down 22.9 so you, you could see as we go up in frequency the impact of that scope probe on the circuit it, it is making uh, a, a difference there